I just wanted you to read you a little part of this story that's in here, which is a very interesting story. Oh, can I just say, it's my dream that once AJ has spare time, he's going to um, read all three books out loud as books on tape for everyone. Because when he reads them, I go, I just read that again. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm not as good a reader as Michael Bailey is, though. But, no, but, but, uh, but because you, you feel the meaning in all of it, I get the meaning in all of it. Because when I try, I go, hang on, what's that word mean? Oh, it's got a fit. Right, okay, yep. And it's just so old, ye oldy language in there. But the truth is you can put me on pause, too. And go, yep, and I go, oh, what <laughs> <do you> mean? <laughs> <laughs> I want everyone else to have that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Um, this uh, was a discussion, a dialogue between a man um, that uh, th- there was a man. Uh, a bit of background about these books is that there was a man. His name was Frederick on Earth. He passed into the spirit world via an accident. He had an accident. He tried to rescue a child uh, from a from being trampled uh, by some horses in a carriage. And in fact, he himself and the child both passed, getting trampled to death. And um, he didn't even realise that he'd passed, actually, in the process initially. And he describes in the first book called the, uh, Through the Mist the entire process he went through. But in The Life of Elysian, he explains a lot more detail about the spirit world, the interaction between the spirit world and Earth. And in the book, he is called Afra. He, he, they gave him a new name after he passed. The na- well, actually, it was a name he chose called Afra. And he was speaking to another spirit about the earthbound condition of spirits, you know, what, what it is to be earthbound. And, uh, and this is what, this is just a small portion of the dialogue between them. Afra said, Is the earthbound condition then another name for hell? I inquired. No, it is in a double sense only the gate, the vestibule of hell. In the earthbound conditions are received actively vicious and openly rebellious souls who, having deceived themselves and being bound to earth by reason of their slavery to sin, thirst for and determine to have revenge upon their fellows. Hence their cup of iniquity is not yet full and in the violence of their passion they elect to continue their evil course in seeking to effect the downfall of others. And are they allowed to do so? Yes, every individual is free to do as he wills in that respect. We have no barriers of restraint, though all are continually and faithfully reminded of the consequences of their action and a ceaseless watch is kept for the first sign of weariness in their futile course. Then, when the measure of their sin is known, they pass from hence, in other words, from this place called earthbound condition to the real punishment of hell then they actually do not endure suffering here in other words around the earth do they endure suffering most mercifully they do or vague indeed would be the hope of their reclamation you imagine if you had no suffering from continuing to attack people then you'd think you could get away with it forever and why would you yeah. want to go to anywhere else? You know, you just keep doing all these things, you see. So, so, of course, it's a merciful thing that actually they do have some pain as a result of their actions. Every soul, as it drops the flesh, finds itself possessed of a spiritual body, which is the true essence of the life producing it, and is only adapted to existence in similar conditions to that which called it into being. As in the physical state, fish prefer water and birds the air, so here every soul gravitates to its own place by virtue of adaption. Does anyone need to pause? (laughs) Yeah. So what he's saying is that that our soul condition draws us to the location in the spirit world. Basically, that's what he's saying. And he's likening it to like fish need need water to live and... And birds need the air, you know, to fly. So he's liking it to every soul needs its own, to, to match its own condition before it can be satisfied, you see. Here, however, lies the one awful fact that we must ever keep in mind or we shall misunderstand everything. Each individual soul 
on entering this life is strung to the same exquisite delicacy of sensation. The brightest saint and the vilest sinner are thus equally sensitive to the pleasure or torment of the position they have deliberately qualified for. Pause button, do we? <laughs> so what, what, do you see what he's saying? He's saying once you pass into the spirit world, the physical sensations of your spirit body are no longer masked by your denial. In other words, you will feel pain as intensely as you feel pleasure. Does that make sense? Now, if you're in a location where pain is the primary thing to feel, then you're going to be feeling exquisite pain, like intense pain, all the time. That's what it means to be in a place of torture in the spirit world. If you're in a place of pleasure in the spirit world, you will feel pleasure feelings all the time. Do you see? Like, that's the beauty. And every soul is strung to the same level of sensitivity to the feeling, whether it's pain or pleasure. Right? And then he says, In this provision, Provision is manifest the perfect justice of God. So long as these rebellious souls remain here and unrepentant, every act of sin brings about its own immediate punishment until the futility of their course works towards repentance through despair, at the first sign of which we intervene and the prodigal is carried away to commence the discharge of the debt it has incurred in the redeemable punishment of hell. So in other words, these spirits who are sitting in this earthbound condition, performing more and more deeds of darkness, if we can say, these doing their things based on their addictions and staying connected to those, not feeling their emotions, designing, denying any of their stuff, the more pain they feel. And they are very, very sensitive to the pain. Very intensely sensitive to the pain. But... The problem for many of them is the level of rage they feel against the system, if you like, or against people generally, or against one type of people like women or men, you know, one gender or what, or between or against society is so the level of rage is so high that they that every time they do an act they feel more pain, but it causes them to be more enraged rather than just to feel the emotion. Like animals then? Yeah, until they get to the point where they reach despair, that they are in so much pain that their rage is no longer able to save them from their pain. Does that make sense? And at that point, they stop, and from that moment on, they enter the spirit world into the hills, into a location where they can begin to work on the law of compensation or repentance. It depends whether they follow the natural love path, which is a law of compensation process or the process of you know full repentance with divine love which is a which is the process we've been describing to you until they do one of those two things they will remain in the condition of hell slowly working through the sins that they committed up until that point so any person who's actually earthbound any spirit who's earthbound has yet to fully embrace all of the things they can do that are bad and therefore as yet come to a location in the spirit world where they can exist permanently. It's, it's like they haven't exhausted their desire for evil things. They still want to. So, they're still, so there's still that desire in them and it's still drawing them and it's only when they reach the point of despair that that desire no longer exists and then... Yeah, people step in and help Into them the hills, in and people can help them there, you see. Yeah. The, the, in the hills, there is always helpers supporting people in the hills. Now, the people in the hills have a choice of actually following the, the natural love uh, principles, which is the law of compensation. So what they have to do then is comp compensate for every deed done on the earth, or they can choose to follow the divine love path, which is more about you know, learning how to become fully repentant and feel the emotions of repentance towards God. 
Now, many of them don't do that for many years and they follow the law of compensation for many years until they recognise, until they have the power in their soul to recognise there is a God. And then they begin directing their dialogue with God and that then begins them, helps them begin receiving divine love. But I just want to continue a bit more with this. It says, Then the actual penalty of hell does not begin here. In other words, in the earthbound condition. I gasped in amazement. How can it possibly do so? He replied. The liabilities incurred cannot be ascertained until the arms of rebellion are laid down. And God exacts strict justice, nothing more. Let me assist you by pointing out the difference between the punishment endured here and that of hell. Then you will better understand what it is I mean. It is possible that the punishment of the present may be equal to that the soul will here experience, but it is simply an effect immediately resulting from an act at the instant of its performance. Pause button. Yeah. What he's saying there is that is that when you do something in this state, so for the spirits that are around us, many, many of the spirits we will finish up talking to in our lives are going to be earthbound spirits. So this is why it's important for us to understand if we ever want to help any of them and we ever want to understand the condition they're in, we need to understand that they are earthbound and as though, as or since they are earthbound, what is going to happen to them is every single thing they choose to do that is unloving, there will be an immediate effect on their own soul and therefore on their own spirit body of pain that is the result of that immediate action. In other words, they are not feeling the pain of all of their life. They are only feeling the pain of the thing they just did. Do, do, does that make sense? And when you think about it, that is a very loving thing because it causes them to see a relationship between the thing they just did and the pain it caused them. Do, does that make sense? Yeah. Nevertheless, uh, listen, Mike. Mike. Uh, never th nevertheless, they will have to feel that what they just caused here on earth also later once they start repenting. In the later on, yes. That's yes, and we'll talk about yeah, that in a okay. sec. But, but, but there is this immediate effect when I do something wrong in the, in the earthbound condition. I'm immediately feeling a penalty. And the reason why I'm immediately feeling a penalty is because God is showing me that actually that what I just did was unloving. And there's a relationship between the pain I feel and the unloving right. act. So if I punch AJ, then I feel immediately <laughs> the pain of that action. Just, yeah. And in, it's, in the spirit It's like state. a mm. reminder, hey, that wasn't, yeah. 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 Whereas here on the earth, what we have a tendency of doing is disconnecting ourselves from the effect, immediate effect of our actions. In, in the earthbound condition, you cannot do that. You can't disconnect yourself from the immediacy of the action. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very loving provision to help you understand that you're still harming yourself by harming others. Yeah. And then he says, um, that cause, this is the, occurs that cause and effect may be clearly traced and the mad career stopped. Right? In the true hell, a man is brought face to face with the full account which stands against him, and he is called upon for payment of both principal and interest. Whatsoever he has sown here he, on earth, he has there to reap, and the identical sin he is in process of discharging remains visible before his eyes until it is blotted out in his payment of it. Do you understand? It's like having a record. And in fact, later on in the book, he, he takes him to a man who has a record before him, a long list of all the different things he did wrong, plastered on a wall in front of the man. And the man has a, ha, sees the picture of the thing he did wrong that he's working on at that moment until he has fully discharged the law of compensation debt for that particular thing. And then he is presented with his next thing, immediately. One after the other, after the other, after the other. Now, now there's a, there's a, in the, there's no escape. <laughs> Can they go back to earth? Uh, at the moment, you would definitely not like that, to be frank. <laughs> You think you'd like you'd that. like the idea of that, <laughs> yeah. but if yeah. I wrote, 
I feel it's Cat Page. It might be a bit confronting. <laughs> you know, if someone had a, if wrote, someone wrote a hundred pages of all the things you've done wrong that you now have to compensate for one by one, how would you then feel? See, see for many people. <laughs> what was that one? I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Of my <laughs> we need to use the mic, otherwise we won't get anything. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, most people would want to choose it, want to you know, choose what they process. And in fact, to be frank with you, the majority of you are choosing what you're wanting to process and discarding the what, hardest what ones. you don't want to pro- yeah. process, right? Uh, this is not available to you in the spirit world, <laughs> right? Yeah. However, um, most people, it brings up a lot of rage because they then feel like they have no control, no self-determination. They have all sorts of feelings as a result of the way in which things are processed there. But if you can imagine someone like Herod or someone like um, Nero who actually had 600 years or more of this process before he found the divine love path, um, he had 600 years of, list, of going through one after the other. And like he said in one of the channelings in, that is kept in the pageant messages, he said, "If it's impossible for me to describe to you the torture that I have been through compensating for my deeds. Right. And, um, and this is where we need to... You see, if on the earth we fully understood the relationship between the things we did here on earth that are unloving and then the compensatory effects we're going to have to pay for them in the spirit world, many people would automatically choose to do a more loving thing. But because here on the earth we believe that we can get away with everything as long as nobody finds out, and if people do find out as long as they don't attempt to punish us for it, we still try to get away with it. And on the, on the earth, we have this tendency to ignore law, to ignore any result of law. And many of us still, like I said Sunday, have this idea in us that we can negotiate with God. You know, I wasn't that bad. I was only bad that day, you know. Like. <laughs> and for me, it feels like, it feels like a, a state of self-involvement. And I, I, um, I find myself in this state at times. And I've begun to recognise it. But when, when, for example, I don't want to cry in front of someone because I feel it's like the ultimate humiliation. If I cry in front of um, Katerina and Gabriella here um, and you're my mum and my sister or something, then you'll use that against me forever and I'll be humiliated and I'll be less than you or, or whatever. And I think that is the worst possible thing. That feeling of humiliation is just so bad for me. I can't feel that, God. I'm going to get angry at them instead. Immediately, my self-involvement about my pain causes me to injure other people. And, and that's how we reason with God. We get to the spirit world and we go, yeah, but they would have humiliated me. And I couldn't bear, with hu- bear humiliation. And it's like this justification of, of our unlovingness because we feel like somehow we can't cope with pain. And it's certainly been pretty much the entire cause of my unlovingness since since we met really hasn't mm. it mm. The, this triggering of so much pain and then feeling i can't do it and choosing instead to project about that mm. yeah and and to be frank with you if we don't learn these lessons here on earth about god and god's laws and so forth when you pass it is actually more difficult to learn them there because you'll actually many of us would be sitting with a list of all the different things we've done wrong right in front of us, with no way out of that once we've passed the earthbound condition and we go into the spirit And we world. can say to God, but I really just, I couldn't feel that feeling of humiliation, but it's still there in front of you, that, that anger projects you. That anger that the you The bargaining doesn't it. work anymore. The, you, know? you know, when you thrashed your child because you couldn't bear what they were saying to you, for example, that'll be listed there in front of you. And you say, but I couldn't bear what he was saying to me. But it's that, that particular point... You can fight it and fight it and fight it as much as you like. And this is why a lot of people in the spirit world don't progress for many, many years. Because they fight every line. <laughs> you know? You smacked your child 2,520 times. <laughs> like, and, and what do you think your child felt? All this, this, you know, all, over the period of you know, their life, let's say. You know, if you, for, some, for some children, they got slapped every day. 
every day is 365 days a year, seven years of that is what? 2,520 times. Right? It doesn't take long to add up huge amounts of sin on our part even if we're just a parent, let alone somebody else who actively tries to harm other people's lives. And it's there. You smack your child, too, you cause all this pain and violence and rage you know, towards your child, and that's a line there, and I'm going, but, but that's what I thought I had to do. That's what you told me. The Bible says that that was right. And I can come up with a thousand excuses for my behaviour, and while I do... That record's just going to be sitting in my face the entire time in the spirit world. I will not get to another location in the spirit world until I discharge that debt. And I'm not going to discharge that debt by fighting it. Can you see? By feeling the causal reason why we did it. By feeling, firstly, that it was wrong yeah. and that it was unloving behaviour and then feeling the underlying emotional reason why I did it. Ironically, Which can be all sorts of reasons. Well, ironically, if we use the example <coughs> I used before, I, I can't feel humiliation, so I'll project rage instead. Ironically, the thing I end up... And beautifully, in my opinion, the thing I end up having to deal with in the spirit world is humiliation. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's the reason why I did it, the yep. causal reason. Yeah. Michael? Just a quick question. I've always wondered, once the spirit finds its place in the spirit world... Can he still do actions that lower his condition? No. Usually a spirit, once he, once he reaches his spirit world in the hills, he is resigned to his condition. And he definitely doesn't want to make it worse. So it's only when a spirit is earthbound that he continues to make his situation worse. So most of the spirits who are causing you distress right at this point of time are actually still earthbound and have yet to actually enter the hells themselves. Their, their right. soul condition would equate to somewhere in the hells, but they've not even gone because there Because they're yet. still <laughs> continuing to do badness. They are still not finished their wickedness yet, and they are still degrading their condition. And it's only when the pain of the instantaneous thing they do affects them so much that they give up and they go into despair. And when they go into despair, that's when they accept where they need to live in the spirit world. Does that make sense? And at that point is the time they enter their location in the hells yep. to discharge their debts of what they created. Ironically, it's also the most loving place for them to exist because they could not bear to live anywhere else. Their despair will match the location. So if the despair is just a little bit of despair, then they'll have a fairly bright, hellish location, if you like. And then if the despair is a lot of despair, they'll have a lot of very, very dark, very, very dark location. Mm. Yep. But they may live in a continual condition without, um, without any regress. So, so what I'm saying there is they may actually live in a place where all of the acts they want to create are actually automatically present in the in the hills. So if you, you give an example. So for example, if I was a rapist in the um, on earth, I would pass in, in usually and and want to continue raping on earth. In other words, what I'll do is I'll in, influence a, another man to rape a woman on earth and I'll set up the rapes even for the man. And until such a time as the pain of doing that exceeds uh, my own rage. And once the pain of doing that exceeds my own rage, I will go to a location in the spirit world that matches... So in other words, I'll no longer be attracted to the earthbound condition and I will be attracted instead to a place in the hills. But that place in the hills is going to be populated by rapists and also potentially populated by women who are terrified of rape. Do you follow me? And, uh, and while I may not be able to rape them, because it's physically not possible anymore, the, it is spiritually possible through the fear that's in, in the women. So, so I may continue doing things with the women in the spirit world, but I will not return to earth. But that is the condition that I will not... I won't get lower than that condition, most probably. It'll just stay in that condition that my soul is attracted to. Does that make sense? And then... 
And then certain events must occur. And of course, remember, this record is kept before your eyes every single moment. So you can't get away from it. You can't get away from the screaming of your own conscience. Does that make sense? In that, in the, so in all the hells, you can't get away from the screaming of your own conscience in the sense that you can't avoid it. But most people try to avoid it by using the same techniques they use here on earth. One of the techniques we use here on earth is by trying to go into denial. Right? And that is still a very popular method of avoiding things in the spirit world. Um, and so we try to stay in denial. And this is why many spirits can stay for thousands of years in a location that is quite tormentous and, and hellish, and yet they can't get out of that condition because they are afraid of acknowledging even the condition. Yeah. There's some very good uh, books about the hills, actually. Some natural love books are about the hills that are worth reading. And one is... Um, the Lawrence of Arabia one is not really is a little bit about the hills, particularly the first seven chapters. Um, it's not called that though, was it? Uh, no, that's called um, Postmortem that's it, Journal. Yeah. Um, the uh, so Postmortem Journal, the first seven uh, uh, chapters or so are quite interesting. After then, it gets very theoretical about theories of reincarnation and so forth that are not very true. So, but the first seven chapters are really good. Interestingly, in the very first chapter, um, he talks about that the first seven years of his existence in the spirit world, he wasn't even conscious of what occurred. He has no memory of it. That's how long it took him to get out of denial of where he was. Yeah. So that's an interesting fact from that book. Um, no, the other one is... Um, no, uh, it's not 30 years among the dead. Um, <laughs> It's um, I don't know what not life of. in the world unseen. It's a uh, it's one written by Anthony Borgia. You know Michael, what I'm talking about. Um, uh, where the man has a soulmate on Earth, and he passes, and his condition is a hellish condition. He passes into the hells, and then he slowly gets himself out awesome. of the hells because of the um, oh. relationship with his soulmate on Earth, who loves him. Um, it's not a warp. Something. Uh, no, can't think of it. It's not life in the world unseen. A oh, wanderer in the spirit. A wanderer in the spirit lands. Is that it? Yeah, a wanderer in the spirit lands. Yeah. It's cool. Mm. It's downloadable from the site. A wanderer in the spirit lands. And uh, yeah, the first again, it's about the first half or a bit less than that of that book. Um, after that, he gets into some Sufi. Theoretic theories that um, his his guides are giving him from natural love guides, but before then um, he's talking about um, the um, the relationship that he has with his par uh, with this woman on Earth, uh, but also the fact that he passed into the hills and he describes some of the hills actually. Some of it he describes erroneously because he um, doesn't actually know the truth of it himself. So, you know, he dis when I say describes it, he describes it and then he makes, then he makes some assumptions, yeah, based on what he's described that are not true. So, um, but, but yeah, there's very, both of them very interesting books to read about the hells and the condition of the hells. But the reason why I wanted to read that is that many times if we want to help a spirit, we need to understand the condition they're in and what, where they currently are. And many of the spirits who come to you for assistance, some of them will be in the hells, but many of them initially may be in this state where they are earthbound. And many of these spirits in the earthbound condition have very little understanding of what's really going on in that condition. And if we understand, we can help them a lot get through that condition and into a state even of repentance and connection with God. And also we can even help them onto the divine love path, actually, if we can communicate with them openly and understand their condition. The secret to helping any spirit is love. If they can feel your love, they have a very good chance of getting from where they are to a new condition. If you only discuss with them truths without discussing love, without feeling love for them, 
then it's going to be very, very hard for them to, to actually embrace any positive thing from what you say. It's the condition of love inside of you towards them that will motivate them. Yeah. So what I thought we'd do is maybe have an opportunity now to talk with a few spirits and I was just wondering yeah, I'll vacate whether time. Anto would like, would you like to join me or do you feel up to that? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yep. Well, what we might I'll do is actually, um, uh, yeah, yeah, if Anto stuff. can bring a mic. Can you yeah. do it with a mic? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And sit next to me, so. <coughs> yes, Glenis, would you, um, if we got another mic? Yes. Yeah, can we have the mic over there? Uh, that's all right, yep. Yeah, just if we send, give the mic to Glenis over there. <coughs> Expecting the man to bring it to you, Glennis. <laughs> That's okay, but it's just interesting. <laughs> can you can you remember your question now? <laughs> um, it's just a question about um, earthbound spirits. Yeah, can only. Um, um, spirits in a bad condition be earthbound or like is it a love reliant thing um, I'm not understanding like earthbound and when they go to the spirit um, there can be spirits in what you would call sort of an average condition who become earthbound because of their addictions or because of their fears so I have actually spoken to uh, for instance a young girl who passed in 1950 um, and she was still living in the graveyard where she had been buried on the earth. She was earthbound. She, she would, was too afraid to listen to any bright spirits. She was uh, about, I think she was about eight years of age when we spoke to her. Um, she was too afraid to listen to any bright spirits at all. And, um, and as a result, she stayed in the graveyard for 50 years or so, just over 50 years before... <laughs> We talked to her uh, by visiting the graveyard, um, and uh, and when we talked to her, uh, a celestial spirit just came and grabbed her hand, and they took her to Summerland. And she could have gone to Summerland fifty years prior, um, but she was too afraid, and it just needed somebody on earth to help her get through her fear. Now, the reason why she was so afraid was because of the parents' condition and the parents' grief when she had passed. And also because of the teachings, the, the Christian teachings the parents had uh, uh, retained in that she believed that she would either go to be with Jesus or she'd go to hell and she went to neither of those places and so she was automatically afraid of where she was and she didn't know what to do. Mm. So they also, like, um, if I pass in a fairly okay condition, or, you know, not in the hells, mm somewhere else in the first sphere mm -hmm. but my family grieves me intensely mm. I can be just drawn back into an attraction with them hey yes yeah. and um, I think that was quite well illustrated by the what dreams may come movie where mm -hmm. Robin Williams kept being drawn back to the grief of his uh, wife and if, and eventually he realized you know just that interaction was causing her even more grief and after a while he decided it wasn't wasn't good for her um, so that, that happens very frequently. Mm. Yeah. Nico, if we have a microphone to... Did I answer your question, Glenn? <coughs> I would like to ask if, let's say, somebody pass, uh, pass and go to the hills, at that moment, are they supported from spirit guides or celestials in order to connect with their emotions? Every single person who ever passes always has a guide and, uh, and guardian still trying to assist them. Oh. The problem is that many of them don't either recognise the fact nor do they listen to them and, nor, uh, and many of them in the hills are very, very afraid of connecting to any bright spirit mostly because of feelings of shame. So in other words, they feel so ashamed about what they've done that they won't talk to a spirit who seems to be holy, if you like, to them. And, uh, and so often they don't even acknowledge. 
at all, completely in denial of, just like many of us here are completely on earth, are completely in denial of any spirit world. They themselves are completely in denial of any spirits higher than themselves who want to assist them. So it's possible to have the, this emotion here on earth, then pass on the spirit world, let's say, hells, and still, let's say, have this list in front of you mm -hmm. and feeling and not be guided, you know, the same uh, hopelessness as here on earth. Yes, it's possible to feel exactly the same hopelessness here on earth and to feel like nobody cares about you at all. When in fact, there are literally surrounded by people who care for you. Like I, I've been in that condition here on earth. Um, as I've said in the past, there's been a time in my life where if I had died, in the physical, nobody would have noticed that I've gone for a couple of months where no, nobody, nobody had any contact with me on a daily basis. And, uh, and so nobody would have even known, noticed that I'd died. So in the spirit world, many people do, are in that condition. <coughs> During that time, I must point out, though, that there would have been many spirits who had noticed that I'd died because I'd had my guides and my guardian and you know, everyone else. Do you know what I mean? But I didn't recognise that fact. I felt totally alone. Right? And I didn't acknowledge there any, uh, anybody's interest in the spirit world at the time. So there are many times when we feel totally alone, when we're not alone at all, but, but we do feel totally alone. And almost every person who is earthbound or every person in the hills usually go through a period of time when they do feel like they're totally alone and nobody cares about them at all. Yeah. All right. Welcome, Ante. Anto's uh, from Australia, for those of you who haven't met him, um, decided to come and visit with us. And uh, for the next two or three weeks, we'll be here. Anto, um, you started speaking with spirits, what, about? From last year. Probably last year. Last yeah. year. Last year, yeah. yeah. And, um, and it's slowly developed more and more, hasn't it, as time's gone on? Yeah, it seems to be growing the more I've um, spent some time with AJ Mary, yeah. um, you just get this sense of openness around yeah. them and, um, and I just found my mediumship has just grown. So yeah. I've been able to test a lot of the things. Um, Through your mediumship? Yeah, and using logic I can also yeah. use my prayers and then I get the answers so I can verify yeah. a lot of the things for myself. Yeah. Now, um, Anto is a bit like... Uh, bit like James Paget in that he's a lawyer as well, or was a lawyer, <laughs> so that's his background. All right, so um, there's a couple of spirits who want to talk through you, so... Yeah. Let's I get this on. young guy who wanted to talk just before the break. Yeah. Um, he was actually a student. He's actually... He's just actually quite... I'm quite thankful that he's been able to talk to you. Yeah. He's um he's come to the realization that he's actually just dead. Yeah. Does he realize when he passed? Uh, well, the incident. I've seen how it passed. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to describe that a little, or? He was travelling. When I was travelling at night on the bike. On a motorbike. I got T intersected. Yeah. And I was slung and just got crushed. Yeah. But you didn't realise at the time you were crushed? No. No. I wasn't even aware I was dead. Yeah. I feel it's strange that no one's acknowledging me. Yeah. I've been trying to talk to everyone. Did uh, you notice your own body when you when that happened or did you still feel you were in your physical body even though you no longer had your physical body with you? I felt I was still me. Yeah. There's nothing different. Yeah. Other than I am more hazier. Yeah. But I attributed that to. Now I attributed to being intoxicated. Right. <laughs> so you were riding the motorbike drunk. Hmm. Coming home. From Coming home. Yeah. From the pluck. From the... From Plaka. Plaka. And, yeah. And what, so you lived in Athens or... Mm. Yeah. Yep. Studying. Studying. Yeah. And, um, and so how long ago did that occur? What was your name? Do you, can you 
tell me your name? It's not coming. No. No worries. Um, so how long ago did you pass, now that you look at it, when you had that accident? How long ago was that? A year and 17 days. Yeah, no worries. And in that time, you hadn't really realised until just recently that you had actually passed. That's right. So what did you spend your time doing? There's so many people. <laughs> yeah. I met all these new friends. Yeah. All people who had passed too, mm. now that you realise it, or mm. they don't realise they'd passed, though. None of us realise that we've passed. Yeah. It's just this great commotion yesterday, and I had to explore and follow these people. Which people did you explore? Some of the people here. Yeah. And when you said a great commotion, what, what do you mean by a commotion? All these people were looking at these people. They can talk to us. Ah, okay. They're different. Yeah. I was entranced yeah. with the archaeological work I was doing. Ah, okay. I thought I'd graduated. Right. So you were attracted to Anto when, when he went to the Parthenon, to the Acropolis or...? To the others. Yeah, okay. It's just they weren't being receptive. Yeah. To my acknowledgement. Yeah. To... Dionysus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to the long haired guy, uh, fellow. Long haired fellow. That, that's Igor, his name. Igor, that's yes. Yeah. Is your name Regis? I get a T, it's confusing between T and D, but similar to your name. Dimitris. Dimitris, yeah. Yes. Do you know him? Um, no, but he visited me last night. Right, yeah. yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I was at your grave. Can we have a mic um, down here? Wherever you the have mic is. No, no, it's uh, the other mic. We, no, I need to, we need to hear. I was uh, at your grave last night on my sleep. There were a lot of friends of, friend of yours. And perhaps a lady about 45 was your mom. See, so this is how we are confused. Because at times you speak to us and at times you don't. Right. Now I understand. Yeah. There were a lot of people over your grave, though. Mm -hmm. We were sharing a discussion about the love of motorbikes. <laughs> 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 Which is where, what we were starting to discuss with. <laughs> mm. And how powerful we feel. Yeah. Yeah, and how all the women like, and how attractive we feel to women. To women riding a bike. To young girls, because yes. it's nice and cool. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And um, can I can I then just talk about a little with you? Like, so you spent a lot of time in the last year just basically feeling that you weren't dead, and talking to other spirits and trying to talk to some people who you knew, but not having much success talking to the people who you knew. Is that how it was? That's correct. Yeah. My family around. Yeah. There's new family members. That have already passed that you now met. Yeah. There's more people. I'm aware of more people. <laughs> yeah. The population is quite immense. Yeah, yeah. So um, what is the reason why you wanted to have a talk with us then? There were a number of points you had raised, yeah. and I was curious as to where do I go from here? Yeah. Now that I know I'm dead, I can see there's all these people here, but I'm curious. Yeah. Do many of the people with you know that they're dead? No. No. And when you talk to them about that, have you tried talking to them about that? I can start to see the difference yeah. in their colour. Can you see too how, like, the people who are alive on Earth, um, they have like different type of body than what you have that you can see. Yes. You can see through it. I've not been willing to see how I really look like. Yeah. I've been looking outward. Yeah. Looking at everyone else and not mm. seeing the contrast between yourself and everyone else. Mm. Mm. 
the chains that you spoke of, Mary. Why do you have shame? Why do you have shame? Feeling of shame. I'm not aware of my feelings. It is only you want to hide the visualizations that I'm connected to at this point. You're hiding. If you can just stop for a moment, because you're distressing him a bit, and we just need to get back yeah, on he's track. He's disconnecting. Yeah. Um, he's feeling judged. Yeah. Feeling judged and attacked. Yeah. yeah, and that's and that doesn't help. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd love to discuss with you about what you can do from here. Would that be okay with you? Like, Please. Yeah. Um, what were your beliefs on earth? Did you have any firm beliefs about what happened when you died? Did you thought, think that what happened when you die, you're just dead? I was a great believer of gods, many gods. Yeah. In mythology. Yeah. So you sort of believe uh, sort of the old Greek... Uh, mythology type. And beliefs. there are many individuals here who believe that. Yep. There are so many individuals here that are from that era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some of them might even be the gods that you refer to. That's right. <laughs> and they are around the monuments that we are working on. That's right. Yep. Well, every one of those people is, are just earthbound spirits. So they are just spirits who are yet to really understand that they've died or passed, or some of them do understand they've died and passed, but they're yet to really leave the earth condition. And my suggestion to you is to not follow that course of action because you will remain here for many, many years and can re actually remain for many centuries or even thousands of years on the earth in that condition. My, my suggestion is to begin to investigate the fact that there is a much bigger spirit world than what you currently realize and the spirit world is made up of such a thing as it's made up of different uh, you could call them different levels of love and each level of love can be obtained by you progressing in love and as you progress in love you can enter different what we what many spirits call spheres or you could just think of them as many different locations each of them happier and brighter than the last and so if you keep yourself locked up in the condition where you currently are and don't decide to progress with love, then what happens is you won't ever experience these beautiful, happy locations. At the moment, the location that you are in is very similar to the location you were in when you are on Earth, right? In the sense that it has similar surroundings, similar types of people. There's a lot of pain as well as happiness, some happiness, a lot of pain. And, uh, and you don't have to continue in a place like that for the rest of your life. You can actually grow into a place of more love. Would you like to know how to do that? Mm. There is a lot that you are saying. I have been attracted to these wonderful people that I've always dreamed of meeting. Yeah. And I can see that they are quite sad. Yeah. You mean the wonderful people who are like the gods of the old... The old ones who are teaching everyone around us. Yes, yeah. And in reality, they're not as developed as you would like, would have liked to have believed them to be. No, yeah. and I'm quite curious as to why there are so many individuals verbally angry at each other. Yeah. There was a division of line between each other well in that's front of you. Yep. So why are they so angry in front of you? You speak of love, but they are in so much pain and angry. Uh, which people are you referring to now? The ones around, that were around previously. When I was willing, wanting to connect, to ah, talk right. to you earlier. Yes, yes. The spirits who were around me, mm. who wanted, who, when you wanted to talk to me, they were very angry. They were very angry. Yes. So if you talk about love, mm -hmm. why is it that not that they are connecting to love? Well, you see, a lot of people don't want to connect to love for a start and most, a lot of people want to retain their anger. You see, one of the things that we need to learn when we pass into the spirit world is that if I'm not willing to feel my own pain, then what I will probably do is be angry with other people. And so what, what happens a lot with me in my relationship with spirits around me 
is that I'm talking to the spirits and saying to them, you need to feel your own pain. Stop blaming other people for your own pain and so forth. And many of the spirits around me then get upset with me because I'm saying that to them, even though what I'm saying to them is the truth about how they can progress. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so the, sometimes the more truth you speak, the more angry everyone gets. And that's only because they don't want to feel their sadness. Mm. Yeah. There is no voice for us here. It is just talking about the old. Yeah. Unfortunately, many times we'll be attracted to a location where, you know, if we were, didn't have a life where we talked about much other than, you know, day-to-day -day life, then when we pass into the spirit world, we still continue to talk about day-to-day -day life. We don't talk about anything deeper. We don't go and investigate anything deeper. And my suggestion to you is to start investigating deeper things. Can I make a, a, a basic comment about the spirit world that's really important for you to understand? And that is that any person who is brighter than you in their spirit body, that person also knows more, about, more than you about the spirit world. So is this not the spirit world? No, where you are currently is still earthbound. So where you are currently is actually connected to the earth, living on the earth with other spirits who are connected to the earth and living on the earth, and you're not le yet left the earth. So you are yet to really be in the spirit world or in heaven, as you can think about it. Um, and, but it, there, are period, there are parts of the spirit world that feel like the hells and there's parts of the spirit world that feel like heaven and there's many parts in between. And each part in between is a different level of love. And so the important thing for you to understand is if, if a spirit is brighter than you are, then that spirit knows more about love than you do. Does that make sense? And because of that, they're worth listening to. Now, can I show you the conditions of brightness of different spirits, just so that you get an idea of what I'm talking about? Mm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask one of my celestial spirit friends to come to you. Oh. You see how bright they are and how happy they look? But I, I don't feel happy. No, I know you don't feel happy. The key is just to feel your feelings still. It's okay to cry. and uh, Just feel your feelings. But you see that spirit is very happy and very bright. You see that? Now that, that spirit knows a lot more than you do about the spirit world. And that spirit can help you become like they are. See how bright they are? But all they're doing is making me feel pain. Uh, they're making you feel pain because of the contrast between yourself and them. What I'm going to take them to do now is to tone down their brightness so that you feel more comfortable. Can you feel more comfortable now? See them toning down their brightness? Can you see that? Mm. Uh, they have control over that. You, see, you feel more comfortable now? They look like me. He's very young. He's very young. How did he die? He's too young. He might look too young, but how did he die? He also died through an accident. Through a vehicle accident. Mm. He got crushed by a truck. By a truck, yeah. yeah. Now, when he passed, he was in a very similar condition to you. Mm. Yeah? But now, if we let him go back to his normal brightness, can you see? We've toned it down again so it doesn't feel as painful for you. Can you see the difference? Can you see that he must have learned how to progress, mustn't he? He must have learned how to work through all the different things that he needed to work through in order to grow. So my suggestion is if you listen to him, he'll be able to tell you many things and he can become a good friend for you. And he can tell you many things about the truth about how to progress in the spirit world. How does he do this? How does he do one? There's too many questions. <laughs> I can answer some of them and then he'll be able to answer many of them for you. He's talking to me in, in my own language. Yes. But he speaks in many languages. That's correct. 
He knows every language of the earth. Mm. Mm. He knows more about archaeology and history than you do. Than I do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. More than mm. more than the gods. Who more than the gods <laughs> who think they know more, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. So how did he get all that knowledge and information? Mm. That's an interesting question, isn't it? How did he create this space around me? A place of protection around you. Mm. That's just by his presence. I can see everyone angry, but <laughs> no one is touching me. Yeah. Well, he's able to communicate with you directly now, and because of your willingness to communicate with him, he's able to surround you with some protection so that we're not bothered by the other angry spirits. He says, I'm a seeker of truth. Yeah. This is why you've investigated archaeology, isn't it? You think about it. Wasn't the reason why you investigated archaeology because you wanted to discover the truth about history? But it's history that holds us. He's saying it's the history that holds us here. Exactly. It's your desire to connect to the history rather than to understand what really happened. It's, a, it's an emotion. He's also saying... He talks quite quickly. <laughs> yeah, well, he puts packets of thoughts into you, doesn't mm. he? It's like... There's a form of stream of lights are coming at me. Yeah. And then with lots of information and pictures. I have all this information. Mm -hmm. I cannot talk to him that way, but no, but he can talk to you that way. Mm. Yeah. So every question is being answered. Yeah. Can you see you don't really need to ask me any more questions? Other than to say yep. I'm so aware. Wow. I'm so aware. that the people on earth around here mm -hmm. are so open to us mm -hmm. and that is what why we are so connected to them that's correct we do not feel that we have passed because they sense that we are here yep and this is something that is quite but sort of unique in Greece in a lot of ways in that in that there's a lot of history here with regard to spirits and spirit communication and all of these kind of things. There's so much that there's very little injury in most Greek people towards communicating with spirits. And as a result of that, most Greek people do feel the influence of spirits in their day-to-day -day life quite, quite markedly. And as a result of that, you also feel like you're still on earth talking to them, um, and, but unfortunately not progressing in the spirit world where you could be progressing to. Mm. Does that make sense? We have so much interaction. Yep. And now I understand it is during at certain times. That's right. Yeah. But I'm also able to talk through them. That's great. And I wasn't aware that I was doing that. Well, mo most but people... I felt connected to them. Yeah, most people are so connected with you at times. Particularly you think of most of the people who go to visit the Acropolis, for example. Most of them in that moment are open to receiving information from you, yeah? Hmm. And then, and then, when they walk away from the Acropolis and they go back to their day-to-day -day lives, they're a bit less open, aren't they? Then hmm. to receive information from you. I've been helping a lot of people hmm. who have asked questions. That's right. I've yeah. helped people. I've been studying through people. Yeah, yeah. Sat exams. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. No wonder you feel like you've got your degree. I realise how rapidly I've learnt. Yeah. But can you see that you've only still learnt about the earth and the physical part of the earth? Can you see you haven't really yet learnt about the soul and love and other things that can help you grow and have the happiness that the spirit who is now talking to you has? My feelings have never been important. Exactly. And all the illustration I'm getting is to connect to my feelings. That's correct. And one thing you're going to need to allow yourself to do is allow the tears to flow and allow yourself to connect to the different grief, different types of grief you feel. And the more you allow that to occur, and if you call upon God, then there is, by the way, only one God. There's that not, is hard to conceive. There's not lots of gods, but there's only one God. But God has the ability to give you her love. I'm quite angered. Yep. 
What about? The fact that all those people who claim to have been God are just people. Are just people. Yeah. And this young friend in front of me. He looks more like a God, doesn't he? He's much more to a halt. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when the truth, when we hear the truth, we're so upset that we were told the error. Does that make sense? And all we need to do is grieve that we were told the error. And grieve that we believed it. I'm also starting to feel quite angry. At my family. Why is that? Because they never taught me this. Well, if you look at them now, when you get the chance, you'll get the chance to go and visit them again and look at them and re-look at them with what you know now. Do I have to return? You don't have to know, but you will get the chance if you want it. And when you look at them, you'll notice that actually there's nothing in them that caused them to be able to teach you anything other than what they already taught you. My friend says that I, once I've learned how to be compassionate, I will feel my desires yeah. to help. Not only that, you will actually be in a position where you can teach your family rather than relying on your family teaching you. You see, we can't really teach somebody unless we've learned the truth ourselves. Mm. I'm drawn. Mm. Shall we the piece of, the piece of this person and I wish to go. Yeah. But oh. thank you so much. It's my pleasure. To you both. going to go for a walk. <laughs> Is there any questions that any of you would like to ask about that? Katerina? Um, I was wondering, he said that at times they feel that people are open? Yep. Like, and you mentioned something about the ruins. Does it have to do the location we are? or? Yeah, what happens um, in, the case, in his case, he, he feels a rapport with anybody who's interested in archaeology, anybody who's interested in the gods, anybody who's interested in, in Greek mythology. Um, some, someone like um, <laughs> Panos back there who is interested in all those things, right? So, so he feels drawn um, to all of those things. So, so, so when, when somebody goes to visit the Acropolis, for example, like we did, we did with Panos yesterday, um, what happens is he feels attracted to that kind of a person who visits, you see, because everyone, every person who visits a location like that generally has a reason for doing so. And so what he does, and then he's able to communicate with them like, and feel them and communicate with them and get some response in that state. But when they walk back to their normal day-to-day -day life, then he can't communicate with them anymore. So there's a bit of confusion of, well, why can't I talk to them then and I can't talk to them then and they don't hear me then, but they hear me then and so forth. But like a tourist that goes there that is interested. Mm-hmm. When he says he communicates, does he just send thoughts mm -hmm. or ideas and then the person just receives the thought and that is conceived as communication? Yes. Because mm -hmm. I would figure any other person that's not open to their emotions, they would not know how they see... No, you just transmits thoughts and then receive thoughts and so forth. So the person on earth would actually not know that it's actual communication with Most the of them don't, no, but some of them do, yeah. So how many people visit the Acropolis, for example, and feel like, Ah, there's. I can feel the people who are here. You know, this, there used to be this person, and there used to be that person. They don't realise that at that very moment they're talking to those particular spirits. Many people who visit Acropolis start reflecting upon Greek mythology, the gods of Greek mythology, for example. Why is that? Because those gods of Greek mythology are actually spirits who have passed, who are actually still present at the location. And in the case of the Acropolis, like how many thousands of people visit that place a day? Maybe ten to twenty thousand people probably a day easily visit that location. So they have an opportunity to connect with thousands and thousands of people in the course of one day. So then, the desire to remain earthbound like he was is actually um, established before the person dies. Like what? Uh, what sends them to earthbound or to the spirit location that they're supposed to go? Um, no, it's more the fact that after they pass, they don't know anything about passing. 
they don't understand that they've passed. And on top of that, they don't understand that they're in spirit world. They don't understand they're in a like in a spirit body. And so and so they feel attracted to their day to day life just as if they were here on earth. And it's very likely that there's some investment in maintaining that. You know, like um dinner dinner sorry um, picked up on some shame that he was suppressing yep. and and so he, that's sort of like an investment in him staying here he, like he, he as he starts to shift from this he's going to be confronted with a lot of emotions and it's like a lot of us you know I'll just watch another show on telly because I don't actually want to f- feel, <laughs> feel anything, anything. No. Um, I don't, so don't want to even feel that I'm tired yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it's not a predetermined thing that like I'm deciding before I pass that I will pass and... Uh, yeah, no. Nothing that's pretty... there because yeah. I don't want to go further up. It's, yeah. just it's very much based on the emotions of the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a child calling from the street. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was Katerina's son. <laughs> so what attracted him since he was like yesterday, let's say until yesterday for more than a year at the Acropolis to hear? I mean, was it maybe because you guys were running around and he felt like, oh, something I can learn from them? Or what made him come here today? How many others went to the Acropolis yesterday? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, you know, it could have been any one of us that he was attracted to. Okay, but it... He said he was attracted to you. Yeah, but it, so it has to do with uh, an attraction to a person that happened to be there. Yes, and that usually, then followed. Yeah. yes, usually there's also a similarity in age, a similarity in emotions. So you know he may have similar emotional feelings that Igor has, okay. and so forth. You know that causes the attraction to Igor specifically. Also, yesterday we ha- we did have a, a discussion with Panos about um, the fact that. It's likely that there's many spirits with him who have similar passions and yeah. Yeah. encourage his passion. So maybe you know they hear some of that. As well. it's we like also had a discussion about the Greek gods and yep. their conditions and okay. yep. and so you know where they are at and may, many of them being still right. earthbound and just people who have passed and all of that stuff as well. There was a, there was a lot of information being discussed during our visit there and of course all of the mm. others who visited there would have been different things being discussed and. Mm. And all of these things create an attraction yeah, okay. for that particular person. And then he just finds himself in a surrounding like here all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And of course it was a hard surrounding for him because there were also quite a lot of very ageful women yeah. here earlier yeah. um, uh, who have sort of lightened up now and, and, mm. and their influence is lessened. Um, but he felt that influence quite strongly. So, you know, he felt quite afraid. Of, uh, oh, he also felt quite afraid of the people who were an- who were in the spirit world who were yeah. angry with me, and so you know he, he, that's why he asked the question about and was confused about why there were so many people angry with me when I only talk about love. Yeah. Um, so you know he, he could see those spirits that are in the spirit world as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, thought it would be good to reflect on this on this exchange here that that happened, um, and just about speaking with spirits and the way that you approach that. Because with Denise, yeah, yeah, the, you know, yeah. The key thing to remember is to um, for everyone. I feel it's a good um, it is to be very careful of a fe- the feelings of judgment we feel, or a feeling of wanting the other person to get to their emotion. This is a very damaging thing that we do to each mm. other. It w- the, we, we want to be very, very careful that we connect at the point of contact rather than at a different point. So, so do you understand they, what I mean by that? The way they approach us, that's their point of contact. So often, like, um, we can feel the emotion. You know, like the young children that were with you before and I could feel the feeling that they have a feeling a fear of loss and confusion Mm. but that I can feel that and know that about who I'm speaking with but I might not confront them with that immediately because I want to give them some more information yeah Mm. just some more information about who I am what's the process we're entering because they don't they're afraid of confusion you know if I just confuse them suddenly it's it's yeah, a disaster. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 No, it's a great right. way to learn. Yeah. That, like, I feel this is very valuable. That's the beauty yeah. of these interactions yeah. is that we can learn a lot through them, not only about the spirit world, but also how to interact with them. And by the way, they were not children. They were afraid and they looked... They appeared like this. Like they shrunk children. like children. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah, the, these people um, who come to us 
need to uh, we need to have a lot of compassion and understanding for them, and one of the ways we do that is by by getting their point of contact with us, and then developing that as far as we are able, without a losing connection with them. So some of the spirits you will be able to help go right into an emotion sometimes, and actually progress through that method. Others, like this particular spirit, we're going to have to be more explanatory with and we're going to have to u help them with their intellect to come to see certain truths and then connect them to some re r truths in the spirit world through that method. The only time I was uh, connected with a good spirit was with uh, Catherine, Katerina when we had the channeling yep. at her place here about a month ago. Yep. Uh, all of the other times, uh, maybe that was problem for me that I was sat down it was uh, I, th I was feeling that they were evil spirits right yeah so See, whereas I don't feel there are any spirits really an evil spirit in the sense that they do evil things many of the spirits still do evil things but um, I don't have a feeling towards them of oh you're evil so I want to you know stop you from speaking afraid to of them. yeah you're or not. afraid of them or anything like that yeah. my feelings are more a feeling of love and concern for them and so they can feel that. And if we maintain that point of contact with them, then we can help them develop and get out of their state, whatever their state is. So even and these angry women spirits who are quite dark, uh, we can assist them into progress um, if they wish to be assisted to progress, of course, and if they don't wish to just damage people. But, uh, but there has to be a point of contact that we can discuss with them. And I feel for them, many of them, the point of contact is what they believe me to be, which they believe me to be the responsible for, for 2,000 years of Christian uh, warfare and damage. Um, and so, you yeah. know, w that is a point of contact that we can start discussing things on with yeah. that group of spirits. Yeah. And it's very valuable when you begin to speak to an earthbound spirit because remember, um, there's so much effort from higher spheres to assist these spirits, but they're, for whatever reason, because of their resistance or fear, they're blocking that assistance. So when you're able to make contact with them, you can, if you work from their point of contact and just even enable them to have enough information to be open to looking up, if you like... That's a huge service that you do to any that you give to any spirit. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we would definitely like to thank Anto for yeah. uh, doing that for yeah. us, yeah. even though he's away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, because that that is a the with all of these interactions, what what we find is not only does the spirit learn many things, but many of us learn many things in the process. Right? We learn many things about. Spirits. We learn many things about people on Earth. We learn many things about our emotions. We learn why things happen on Earth, you know, and uh, because of the different spirit influences that are there. We can see things from a spirit's perspective, which is a very interesting perspective sometimes to see things with. And, uh, and in the process, learn a lot more about our own future, our potential futures. So, so there's a lot of blessings and benefits from these interactions. Um, it's getting fairly late now. Uh, it must be approaching nine-ish. Um, so uh, it's quarter two, yeah. Um, and I probably think that uh, probably need to finish around nine-ish. But uh, what I was thinking, we might uh, just talk a little bit about uh, before we close. Uh, many of you have asked about earth changes in the Sunday group. Um, wanted to know about earth changes with regard to uh, Europe and, and Greece, and but other countries in Europe too, that where some of you come from. And what I would like to do is actually um, maybe use our next session together with spirits to investigate some of that, some of those, some of that information, which, which I think will probably be next Wednesday evening. Um, so the direction we would like to probably take next Wednesday evening is along that line. Um, but remember that what we need to do is to have some openness to um, the truths about earth changes. Does that make sense? We need to have some openness to the truths about it. So I was wondering how you went with my suggestion on Sunday to feel about 
some of the emotions you feel about what may happen to Greece or what may happen to Europe and just feel about those kind of feelings. I, I wonder whether you had allowed yourself to address any of those issues at all. Um, does anybody feel they did attempt to do some of that? Um, if we just pass the mic backwards. It's easier for me to feel what in the rest of the Europe will happen than <laughs> focus really on in Greece, you know? Yep. Yeah. So does that mean we need to find a French person <laughs> to tell you about Greece so that you can tell yeah. the French about person France. about France? <laughs> uh, that would be a really big help, but from if it's okay and I'm not 100% certain, I only know one thing. In the uh, South Mediterranean Sea, we will have uh, volcanic eruptions. That is for certain. Yes. Especially one of the biggest one is Mount Etna in uh, Sicily. And uh, uh, I, I'm, af I'm particularly afraid of the end of the, let's say, bow. It's, it's, it's here in Nisiros. But because I live in Athens, I'm also afraid of the volcano here in Athens. Yeah. But my emotion tells me that the volcano in Isiros is going to erupt. I don't know if the rest of the volcanic, let's say, Sadorini erupts with it. I know that there's going to be a lot of us, and I know I have emotions towards searching my food, you know, under one meter of ash. It's really hard. Mm. Yeah. Um, rather than focusing on the details tonight, uh, what you say, Nico, is quite true. There will be quite a lot of things happening here, I feel, and we can discuss them next... We'll use next Wednesday night to discuss sort of the details of all of those kind of things, if we can, as much as we possibly can anyway. Um, but what I would like you to consider is just allowing yourselves to just work through fe any fear you have about knowing the truth about your particular location, wherever that particular location is on the planet. Um, because obviously, you know, one of the things you're trying to find about, out about is your own location, and yet that's the location you have the most fear about. So, so naturally it's going to be the thing that is most difficult for you to hear about. Um, and if you can allow... If we can allow um, ourselves to receive this information, because there is quite a lot of information that can be given, if we can allow ourselves to receive this information, um, we are then are, are more able to be prepared for what may occur. Now, in terms of generalities, what myself and Mary are doing over the coming months is we, we have a process already that we've begun, and I've mentioned this before, that we've begun investigating... Um, earth changes all around the earth and we're trying to put together a summary of all of the changes that occur in each location around the earth to as far a greater detail as we can given the time constraints that we have and what we'd like to do then is to prepare a document that we can place on the internet of a summary of all of those particular changes and events um, but we do want there to be some degree of uh, some level of um, um, certainty about those particular events and for that to occur we need to investigate through a series of processes that we're going through at the moment with some spirits um, the truth of what they're saying and the accuracy of what they're saying and so that uh, is happening as we speak basically and will continue to happen till the end of next month and uh, and then we hope to be able to start presenting more information about earth changes and, and what different, how different areas will be affected. So please bear in mind that whatever you see and hear next Wednesday evening, while it may be the comments of different individuals who are present and may be the different feelings of different individuals that are present and it may also be what different spirits with us believe or think will occur, that we as yet ourselves, myself and Mary, could not, would not say to you for certain what will occur. Do you follow me? 
until such a time as we have some certainty in these interactions that we're investigating. And to give you um, <clears throat> just an example, if you're going to sit down and try and channel about these things, we did this as an experiment with the mediumship team that we've started for God's Way of Love. Everyone went home to channel about earth changes, not to share about the process necessarily, but to challenge themselves to channel about something they were afraid of as an exercise. And um, <clears throat> the results were very varied. And, and Nico, you'll like this. The only place that's safe in the world, if I combined all of the different things, where we live. Kingaroy. Yeah. <laughs> because everyone else lived there, so they're like, it's safe here. Um, but but um, some of the mediums related this feeling of pressure, and it's similar to what Nina was describing earlier, this feeling of compulsion. Oh, it, no prayer beforehand. Oh, I've just got to write it down. Oh, now it's finished. And th there was a lot of terror. And in fact, they were just channeling spirits in lower spheres who are terrified about earth changes and who like... Because they're, they're terrified for a lot of different reasons, yeah. which we can list if you yeah, wish. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. go on. Um, and so the quality of the mediumship was not very high and the quality of the experience for the medium should have told them that this is... An, I'm not actually channeling someone in a celestial state or someone in a higher state. So just for yourselves to reflect on what's happening for you emotionally as you sit down to channel or connect with someone. Mm -hmm. If you're in a... And this is why AJ is stressing the importance of at least acknowledging your fears and starting to look into them. Because if you're in a heightened state of fear, you're going to have the most rapport with a with a spirit in a heightened state of fear. And the quality... And where are they? It, it lowest. They're in the lowest <laughs> spheres. Yeah. yeah. And they don't have access to that kind of information accurately because, just like us, their fear obscures their clarity. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. It, it do it when you're in a clear space, when you feel okay to pray and, yeah. And just for next week, I was wondering whether someone would know how to purchase a map of Europe that we can basically put up and, and point to. Yeah? 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 You'd be able to do that for us, Nico? Like, I mean, a fairly big one that we can yeah. sort of whack up on a wall or something. Just to illustrate, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> G'day. That'd be excellent. Okay, how's everyone found tonight? Yeah? So you felt like you understand a bit better what's going on between yourselves and the spirit world and the different influences occurring? Scared the crap out of you. Scared the crap out of you. We're <laughs> just stay here forever. Yeah. The the beauty of the of dying uh, with with this with this knowledge is that the more you know when you pass, the far better off you are. Uh, it's it's totally the opposite of what most people most people on the earth believe. The less I know about death, the better. But the reality is, the more you know about it, and the more you know about the spirit world, the better off you're going to be. Because because if inadvertently you do find yourself in one of the hills when you pass, you'll at least know how to get out of it. Right? <laughs> and, and if you do find yourself in the second sphere when you pass, you'll go with relief. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> beauty. <laughs> yeah, that's a relief. And, and so you at least know where you are. And also with the interactions, you'll at least know some of the details about the interactions between the earth and the spirit world. So if you feel drawn to come back to the earth pulled by the grief of some of the people who uh, who haven't passed you know and, and who are friends of yours then you'll know why you're being pulled you know you, there's all these things you'll know about and understand because we've discussed them at least whereas whereas if we'd never discussed them what would you ever know that's the difficulty isn't it Mm. Yeah. yeah. So and yeah. No, I was just going to thank you for your participation because I'm I'm going to email the mediumship team and recommend that they actually watch this talk as well because I feel it's been really yeah. we've covered a lot that will help a lot of people. So yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's you, very good. you've created that opportunity for us yeah. to talk about those things. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to thank you again, Igor, for your for your work doing what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and Lena. And Lena. Yeah. As well, and I'd like to thank Panos too for organising yeah, his stuff. Absolutely. That, um, yeah.
And we'd like to thank Artu and Katerina, Katerina for, the, for the use of their house yeah. tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd also like you thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, yeah, yeah. uh, like we say, Mary and I, we recognise that your time is precious and... Mm. To spend five hours listening to people talk sometimes can be quite exhausting. <laughs> yeah. um, we hope that uh, over the coming couple of weeks we can enjoy your company more and, and we're looking forward to the weekend. We feel we might make the weekend um, sort of much the same as we've had tonight, even though there might be a larger group. And uh, we're still not sure of the actual subject matters of what we'll discuss on the weekend because we want to give all of those of you who haven't had much of an opportunity to speak with us to, um, to ask questions about certain matters. So what we yeah. may finish up doing is make Saturday a, a sort of like a talk subject and then Sunday we may actually leave open to those of you... Um, so like we'll have to ask all the Australians to... Of, yeah. To, to quiet down and all of those people who have... <laughs> They're rowdy, aren't they? <laughs> They're rowdy. <laughs> and, and all of those people who have had the opportunity to ask many questions to just sit for the background for a bit. And, uh, and then those of you from Greece and, and Europe um, who haven't had as much opportunity to ask questions and so forth, we might... Uh, if we feel that perhaps Sunday would be a good opportunity for us to engage a bit more with the questions that you have about different mm. things. Um, so. Yeah, and we know that connection with God seems to be a big. Uh, you'd like a talk about that, and possibly love, uh, love. and sex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel shocked about that? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just smiling because uh, there's there's already enough sex here in Athens, isn't there? Like, <laughs> no, no. No, I feel it is a subject that needs to be talked about. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that would be great to talk about that. Maybe it maybe will happen the following weekend, though. Yeah. Also, I was listening to um, something on YouTube that you talked about, about the love of the universe. Um, it, it, you talked about something very interesting that I didn't know. Yeah. You don't need... I was talking about health, attitude to health, and, and what we put in our bodies and our... Yeah. And you said there's a fast track to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of um, there is a lot of talks yet that we're yet to place on YouTube. Okay. Um, Igor's been doing it by himself, and of course, you know, there's a, quite there's a lot a backlog, of work yeah. involved. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And uh, uh, it, there's a, so there's a whole back there's a backlog of nearly 100 talks yet to be placed on YouTube. And so what I've asked Igor to do is to focus firstly on the talks that have yet to be put onto DVD. Mm. So that means that he's focusing firstly on the talks that we gave in 2010 and 2011. And then once all of those talks are placed on YouTube, then we'll be going back to the talks from older, from older sessions and placing them on YouTube as well. But, but as but you can imagine, it's quite a large job. Every talk uh, takes quite a few hours. It's uh, large amounts of data, around 60 to 80 gigabytes of data for every talk. 300, <coughs> 300, 300. gigabytes, is it? <coughs> of data for every talk. Uh, going through these ninjas now, they are, but, but the old, older talks are like 60 to 80 gigabytes of data. But it's, but it's done in such a manner that it's quite slow and it means that we need to, you know, depend many hours editing. And so for one person, it takes a very long time. So, um, so the talks now are quite easy to place in comparison, to can place on, on YouTube in comparison to the older talks. And I so think last Sunday's talk's already on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. 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 First part of it is, yeah. yeah. And... Um, th and, of course, Igor is travelling with us as well as doing other things in amongst all of this. So, um, you know, it's quite a, a, a time-consuming process. But your, your question is just really about how do I get healthy through the soul? Yeah. Right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Should we answer that on the weekend? 
Um, yeah, yeah, let's. It's let's probably not a short answer. Ask that on Sunday. Yeah, ask that on Sunday. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you. So, thanks for, so everyone. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was you going to say, Elizabeth? I just brought some little koalas. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No worries. <laughs> Not that they look anything like them. Is that how it goes? Because koalas are out this big. And <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah.